Who would not get excited on seeing a coffee orchard full of red ripe cherries? Initially, however, when this farmer planted coffee, a lot of people doubted on its benefits, and the farmer himself was not sure about it. <laughs> The monetary returns from the coffee plants have become an example of coffee as an income generating crop to the people of this village. Nowadays, this farmer is encouraging and teaching other farmers to grow coffee and process the cherries at the village level. Simply planting coffee does not bring in profits. The important things are to know the improved practice of growing coffee organically, harvesting properly and processing cherries at village level using appropriate technology. Farmers can process coffee either by dry or wet method. Processing by wet method produces better quality coffee. There is a good market for Nepali coffee in the international market when processed by wet method. This documentary explains harvesting fresh cherries and processing cherries by wet method to produce high quality dry parchment at the village level. In Nepal, coffee begins to ripen from October to March, but the time varies depending on the altitude and climatic conditions. It is important for the farmers to know when and how to harvest fresh cherries. First, picking of the cherries should be done only after about 5% of the cherries on the plant become shiny red. When the seeds snap out easily, when you squeeze the cherry between your thumb and forefinger, it is the right stage for picking and pulping the cherries. The overripe and black dry cherries should be picked and disposed of. Mixing overripe cherries with red ripe cherries will deteriorate the quality. Yes, so, rato, college wrong, bhaigo, but very college bhaigo, but you may not. Yes, so then, who bhaigo, then, cheap no person. These types of overripe cherries are susceptible to mold growth. Cherries with mold are hazardous to health. Even one or two molded cherries affect the quality of the whole lot. While picking the cherries, sack,
plastic or tarpaulin sheet can be spread on the ground below the tree to prevent fallen cherries to come into contact with the soil. All the coffee cherries in a plant don't ripen at the same time. Ripe cherries should be hand-picked four to five times intermittently. During the last picking, all the cherries should be picked and sorted. Only red cherries are pulped. Even the cherries that have dropped on the ground around the plant should be collected and disposed or used in compost making. After the cherries are picked, it is important to sort and separate them. Only the red cherries should be pulped. The green and overripe cherries should be dried for household consumption. Density sorting is done to separate and discard light cherries. A plastic bucket with holes all around is placed inside another bucket. The cherries are put in the bucket and water is poured in. The cherries are stirred and the light cherries float on the water, which are separated and discarded. This is a pulp machine. It is used to remove the pulp from the cherries. After the cherries are harvested, it should be taken to the pulping center within 24 hours and pulped. The pulping machine should be good enough to remove the pulp without damaging the parchment. The pulp removed from the cherries can be used to make compost. The parchment produced after pulping contains sticky mucilage. Mucilage is broken down by fermentation and removed by washing. Depending on the location, the parchment should be fermented for about 24 to 48 hours to remove the mucilage completely. Kisan ka yo kasari permit bhai sabko bani pura tha paun na golai. Yo yesari satta lauro ganne yamla satta ghuma aara yo jigni. Yo phutta jigni sake pachi yo pual ma yi girale taliyo hani permit bhai na yo kabi. Heri rakhnu par sa yo khula raayo. After fermentation, parchment should be washed about three to four times using clean water. The fermentation is 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 the 
draining off as much water as possible from the wet parchment by pre-drying facilitates shortening drying time that is of critical importance in preserving the inherent quality of coffee and preventing cracking of the beans. Pre-drying should be done immediately after washing to avoid development of off flavors. 16 gauge wire mesh fitted with wood or metal frames and mounted on short legs giving a ground clearance of 2 to 3 feet is used for pre-drying. Preferably pre-drying is done under the shade. However, pre-drying can be done under direct sunlight provided the parchments are turned frequently on the wire mesh. All discolored black and brown parchments are removed. After pre-drying for three to four days, the parchment is ready for main drying on the drying floor. The sun's rays sterilize the parchments, thereby inhibiting bacterial growth. With adequate sun periods and repeated turning over of the parchments, the parchments will be completely dried within three to four days. <laughs> The dried parchments should be packed in clean jute bags. A tag should be placed on the bag with the name and address of the producer group, date of pulping, name of the pulper operator, altitude of coffee grown and the weight of the parchment. If the above mentioned process is carefully followed, better quality coffee can be produced and subsequently farmers can get good returns. <laughs>